finally after such a long time it's finally time for a new beta for Crow Castle which means we should be getting this update to the main servers in a couple of weeks most likely there's a bunch of new changes some you can see in this picture right now we will go through them all and there's just some good things there's some bad things and there's some potentially very bad things that might happen with this next update so let's go through all of those changes right now let's start with the good news first and leave that abomination towards the end so this first thing is very good thing for early and mid game players alike so after the update there will be a chest battle in the first colony world with a difficulty of 100 and once you complete this battle you are guaranteed to get an s tier staff with double cooldown lines so you are guaranteed to get a double cooldown staff from beating this battle. And double cooldown staff, that's extremely great, especially when you are starting out, because you will need those cooldown lines for your pure wizard and your necromancer. Sadly, you can only complete this once, but nevertheless, a guaranteed double cooldown staff, oh, that's great thing. That's, that's super great thing for many players, I'm sure of that. There will also be some quality of life updates for farming, and this will help all players across the board. Uh, the first one is that chances of encountering bosses in the Beckin dungeon will change in a way that you will be more likely now to encounter the spider boss from this dungeon. And why this is great is because the spider boss drops attack speed runes. And now attack speed rune is the main thing you really want from this dungeon when you are farming the beginner dungeon. So being able to encounter the spider more often means you will be able to get attack speed runes also more often. So that's very nice thing for your farming. Another change is that the chest duration after any dragon battle will be changed from 10 seconds to 5 seconds. So it will be cut in half. And this means you will be able to farm dragons faster, which means you will be able to get more kills in per hour, which means you will be able to get more items per hour, which means you will be able to get better items potentially faster than before. And to me, this is the best part of this update. These Both of these changes are extremely nice quality of life changes for me and I, I'm sure for many pay players as well. We will also get a new promotion for our Bowmaster called the Dark Lightning Archer. Now this will change the element of Bowmaster to Lightning. There will be a new promotion path in the, in the promotion tree. And with the final promotion, he will have the same passive attack speed boost than the Dark Bowmaster. He will have the same damage to boss monsters and he will also have the same strafe, except it's a little bit longer. However, his base attack speed is a little bit lower than the Dark Bowmaster physical version of this one, so that's the downside of this promotion. There is no new skill nodes in the skill tree for this promotion, but since he is now lightning type, he will take boost from the lightning boosting nodes in the lightning skill tree instead of the physical skill tree if you use this promotion. And then the question, is she worth to be used in this promotion or is this promotion bad? And I would say with the initial testings, it's going to be probably situational depending on your account and on this main account of mine where i have both physical and full lightning tree as well both of the promotion deal pretty similar damage in my wave testings uh, but since there's a little bit lower attack speed on the lightning promotion sometimes there was a little bit lower damage to bosses dealt from the dark lightning archer compared to the dark bowmaster so there might be the chains and you most likely want your bowmaster to be a boss killer anyway so i would say that's the most important part of her being in your build then again because she is lightning type in this promotion she will have increased damage to flying monsters by 200 percent this means that in case you are struggling with any flying monsters this should probably clear all those issues all together with this promotion but the problem that lies in here is also that you will still want the strafe nodes or your bowmaster anyway and they are located in the physical tree so if you start with the lightning tree and you want to use a lightning build with the lightning bowmaster lightning archer that might work but you will still need to go to the physical tree to get these strafe nodes in order to boost your dark lightning archer and if you do that then you might as well just use the physical promotion anyway so it's a little bit mixed especially for for early and mid game players but for me example i have enough skill points that I have the luxury of taking all the points in both trees so I can test with some promotion and they, the damage output seems quite similar in there. So I would say further testing is required but most likely for majority of players this will not drive any changes to your physical summon meta build and you are just good to keep on using the Dark Bowmaster promotion even after this update. And then we are also getting some minor changes for town archers. So if you go to the town section, we will have two new types of skins for our town archers or town cannons. We will have the stone version and this uh, dead slime version of a skin to be used after this update. And also another new thing will be that these costumes will also give our town archers small buffs. So we will be getting some 
minor damage boost from wearing a helmet and some minor critical damage boost from wearing a body. And you can level this up, up to 5% each. Each upgrade will cost 25 crystals, so once you do that, they will both cap out at 5%. So you will have 5% increased damage and 5% increased critical damage small boost, but it's a new stuff nevertheless. And these are unique to each part, so if you want to change to another costume, you have to level up the next one as well to get that boost. But you have a couple of new options that you can use in there as well. And then let's move towards the bad things about this update. And first of all, there's a couple of bug fixes that will be implemented once it goes live. And usually bug fixes are a great thing, right? Uh, but this time there's this one line that says a bug where the Druid Falcons blocks enemy attacks during infinite waves. So apparently just because the Druid Hawks are immortal, it doesn't mean they should be able to body block enemy attacks. So this means that once this update goes live, the Hawks will no, no longer be able to block those ranged attacks from ranged units in infinite ways, so in, in your hell mode, which means your flying Hawks will keep on dying more often than usually, which means you will be struggling with against the air monsters more often than usually. So this is definitely a nerf to our Town Archer hell mode builds and to hero hell mode builds as well. But especially the Town Archer hell mode builds will most likely suffer from this update. And finally, let's address this elephant in the room, which is the new auto skip function. So in here you can see that after this update, there's supposed to become an auto skip plus 30 option available for auto battle that will keep automatically spending your white crystals to do automatically plus 30 skips so that you don't have to manually do them every now and then once you have gathered enough crystals. Well, that sounds great, right? And yeah, it does sound great, but there's a catch. It only works with time auto battle. It doesn't work with gold auto battle. You can see the option is not available in here. It doesn't work with free auto battle. The option is not available in there as well. So it only works if you use time auto battle. This makes it extremely pay to win function. And I sincerely do hope that this update does not, this section of this update does not make it into the game as it is right now. So either this should be cancelled or it should be implemented that also works with other auto battle modes as well either or just leaving it with time auto battle only is just i don't know it's extremely sad if this goes through like this it's extremely pay to win thing to be added into this game and i don't like it at all there's a lot of people also in leaderboards right now who don't like it you can see it if you scroll through the leaderboards uh, let's just hope that this will be changed at least a little bit because this if this goes through will be very annoying thing you will be Basically, you will have no chance to compete in seasonal waves unless you use time auto battle. So that rules out a lot of free-to-play players or players who do not wish to but be keep on buying time auto battle. And I don't know, this gives me flashbacks from the early days of the game where you basically had to buy time auto battle so that you could be able to progress smoothly. And I don't want to go back to those days. So let's sincerely hope that this does not make it into the game. So either remove it or make it work with auto game mo auto battle modes as well. Those are the changes. There are no new game modes, sadly, for this update. Hopefully in the next one we will be getting some. Let's hope so. Uh, quality of life updates are always a nice thing. But let's see if that auto skip function goes through or not. What is your favorite part of this update so far based on this uh, beta version available right now? Let me know in the comment section. See you in there. Stay safe, my friends. Laku out.